Today, I want to talk about something that comes up quite a lot. Um, our ServiceMate customers want to figure out what their profit on their jobs are. And then usually they want to see, you know, profit by uh, technician or profit by client and so on. But the very basics of that just still comes down to how do you record your costs, you know, because you need those costs uh, in the materials and the labor to figure out what the profit was. Now, it's not always obvious how to set this up in ServiceMate. Um, a lot of clients don't want to show labor line items on the invoices, for instance, or um, show every single material or anything like that. So, um, but there are ways to do it. It's just uh, not that obvious necessarily. So I thought, let's do this little video. I'll talk through it and then show how we can report on that in Wink Reports. Now, if you Google for ServiceMate job costing, it comes up with this page uh, where it talks about the job costing add-on. And so we'll be using this and um, this will go through and say how material costs get calculated. I'll show an example. Um, they also talk here about, uh, where was it? Uh, how you can set things up where yeah, there's no column for the cost, but you can enable it with the margin billing add-on. That's it. So let's jump into ServiceMate here. I have my little demo <laughs> account here. And first, we're going to go to the add-ons. And you will want to turn on, if you scroll down a bit, these two add-ons. Job costing, which, you know, displays the cost and profit data, which is what we're after. And if you don't want to show every, every material item on your invoices, then you'll have to turn on this margin billing section as well. Because uh, this allows you that you can dynamically just enter your costs and then that will flow through to the profit calculations. So I've turned these on already. If you go back in, uh, I'm just going to show you, I have a staff here. We're going to use Bill Bonza as our um, technician. And to get the cost settings to work, you have to do a few things, right? So and it's all here in materials and services. Now, if you have certain products or items that you, materials that you use often, uh, it's worthwhile putting in a list in here of uh, every one of them and saying, like for instance, I have this, let's say AAA, that's a custom item. Uh, I can put in, hey, this, I charge $200 to the client and it costs me $100 to buy. Uh, and you can manage your stock and things in here as well. Let's say we have five in stock. Um, but, you know, that's not necessarily needed. I'll show you how you could have, for instance, just a standard, I'm going in there for an electrical check or some sort of plumbing inspection, and now you can price it then or have a service package or something like that. The other thing that we need to add is you need to add in a labor line item. Now, I've set one year up for bill, and the important thing is you need the word labor in the item number and in the name. Uh, if you have the word labor, uh, if, and if you're the US, you can just you know do the US spelling, both work. But this is how ServiceMate knows that costs from these things need to go into the labor bucket and not in the materials bucket. And I don't really want to see, let the client see, oh, we spent so many hours. I'm not doing per hour pricing or anything, but I'm just going to put in that bill cost me $50 an hour. Uh, and this is, and I want to use this in my calculations for the labor uh, behind the scenes. So I'm going to save this one. So you can put one there for each person, or you can just put a single one if everything's the same. Um, but I think we're ready to do a job now, right? So let's jump into, I'm just going to create a job. Um, 
Uh, how do you create a new job again, right? <laughs> Over here, new job. So I'm just going to go and say, you know, I've got the things set up here. I'm going to put this straight into a work order. And in the quoting, this is now where you add your materials and services, right? So I'm going to do two examples. We're going to put that AAA item in there. And you'll see with this, there's now a cost and a margin um, columns because we added that add-in, you know, that allows us to edit these things in here. I can also add in another item uh, that is, let's say, just a service package, but there's no cost associated uh, with that at the moment. So, you know, we'll have both of these in there. And let's save this and see what happens. So if I go back into that job, we've got it over here now. Uh, I can now see the estimated profit. So if you look here, oh, you can move your eye. There's no time yet, there's no labor, but if we look at the materials, uh, it would have added up to 350 plus 200 would be um, uh, <laughs> 550 minus 100, so that's 451 uh, in profit that's left, right? So now you can use all these things. And, you know, we can in here go and edit things. We could say that this one's cost was actually uh, 150, right? And we can change the price here for this package. We say, okay, this was 350 and the cost of that is 20. It doesn't matter. You can edit this now on the fly. Um, and the client won't see this, right? When, if we uh, generate a quote or something for that, let's try that. Let's um, produce the quote. Then you know, they just see there was one of that and that was the cost. You know, there's no, they don't, oh, sorry, the, the, the price that they pay. There's no, um, uh, you know, margin or cost or anything involved there. And as you've noticed, I haven't put any labor in here at all yet. For instance, this service package, I'm going to change the cost back to zero because this is just the flat rate that we're charging the client. And what we do then is your technician would go out, if they use the time logging functionality, as they log the times, it will automatically apply a cost um, or uh, yeah, the cost from that labor drop down that list. You know, So if Bill, Bill clicks on the um, uh, logging his time, he will select his time um, product and that will apply that uh, that cost into it. Now I don't have the app open here but you can just click there on the check-in data and so I can add one in here. So I'll say Bill was here, his rate was the Bill one, he started at 10 a.m. and he was there for let's say two hours. Okay, now here you can click this button to add it to the invoice. But like I was saying before, we're not going to be using that at all. We just want to see, we just want to record it for our own purposes, uh, but without the client knowing what it was. Okay, so if I say, just save this, suddenly you'll now see that there's two hours has been uh, added in there. So the labor is now minus $100, remember, because I said it's $50 an hour, and we put him on logged two hours. The materials, uh, profit stays the same, and so the total profit is, uh, you know, sub subtracting the, the labor costs from that. All good so far. So this is, I think, how it runs in ServiceMate. You can easily come into the job, see what the profit was, um, 
without having to you know itemize everything you could put a single line item on here and just put your costs in and that would be good enough so i'm going to close this one and i'm going to go over into wink reports i'm just going to usually we update pretty quickly but i'm just going to click refresh to make sure that our uh, data gets loaded in properly and I'm just going to show where we can get that information from now. So if I go and say, uh, let's work out our labor costs. And I'll call this video tutorial folder. So the labor costs are found in the appointments data source. So service made appointments. And what was our job number? Job number 32. So I'm just going to filter things to job number equals 32. So we only see, you know, what we just uh, just built. And here you can see that 11, um, actually my time zone is set a bit differently, but you can see that there was the two hours for Bill on job 32. Now there's a few other um columns we can add for instance in this we show scheduled and visited i never scheduled that job it just visited so we might want to make sure that we only show um, whether appointment type equals visited and then we can add another column. There is a column here for the labor cost. So the labor costs will have labor costs 100 and it will have the duration there. So two hours at $100. And if I remember correctly, that is exactly what we had over here. Two hours and the labor cost was 100 and uh, now we have to create a second report to get the material costs so design a new report we'll say this is um, material costs uh, put it in there and so this we have to pull from the invoice lines right because that's where the um, where we put those costs in And I am again going to just make sure that we filter for the um, job number equals 32. I'm going to turn off the date filter so I can just find that job specific job over there for us. And here we go. So this is our two uh, line items that we had in there. So custom item and service package. And we can say the cost, the unit cost. And also we actually had the unit cost, including tax. So you can see we're getting the same fields back that we had, so it's 150 from 200 and zero from that one. So it was you know, 150 from 200 and zero from 350. So we can add a formula, right, and say the uh, material cost was, um, it's the total price. Uh, actually, let's do it a different way. We can say this was, um, it's the quantity quantity times the unit cost, including tax. So if there was like three items, for instance, then you would have, you know, you have to multiply it because this was just the unit cost. So I'm going to remove the little columns we don't really need.
So I'm going to leave job number and the materials cost in this report. I'm going to set it to be a data source so I can use it in another report. Uh, I can also, I'm also like in a pivot table, I'm just going to aggregate this up. For, so for the one job, I'm going to sum up all the costs. So if they had multiple separate costs, then uh, it would just get one line and add all of those up for you. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my labor one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to remove all these columns we don't need. I'm going to end up with the job number uh, and maybe the client name and the labor cost. And I'm going to sum this up as well. Actually, we can probably add like a, um, we'll keep the, uh, no, nah, I'll leave that out. I'm trying to keep it simple. I'll make this a data source as well. And actually, I forgot, I might just in this one add the, uh, total price. I do think we want to <laughs> have that to let me just rename this and just go, you know, I'll leave it as total price and sum that up as well. So now we get the total cost of what the the job, you know, the revenue that it kept, that brought in. Okay, save this. Now we're going to make a third report that merges these two together. So let's do that quickly. So I'm going to go design a new report, job 32 profit. Now remember, if I didn't filter per job, it would list all the jobs and it will join all of them together. So I just don't have that much uh, uh, demo data to show you. But I'll select the merge reports and let's have a look. I need to now pick which ones to merge. So I want to merge the labor costs with the material costs. And the columns we have here is we're going to have the job number, the client name, the total price, the labor cost, and the material cost. And let's fix that up to just say this is a currency. And so we can add a couple of formula columns. Let's say that profit um, that's formula one, let's call this gross profit, or GP, and I'll say this is the total price minus the labor cost minus the materials cost, and it will be a currency. Let's see, it's worked out 300 dollars and the let's have a look in service mate if it's the same estimated profit 300 it's exactly the same and so we can then say for the other formula let's go gp percentage um, we can just say that is the gross profit divided by the total price and we say that this is a percentage fifty four percent fifty five percent they've rounded up it's fifty four point five five and there you go that's it that's an easy way to work out the profit and so now we could you know go by client we can sum their, their profits up or see the average profit by client uh, or by uh, employee if we added the employee column in there or by any other field that you want um, okay that's it and talk to you guys next time